Breakups can be devastating. Breakups can also cause so many mixed feelings and emotions as well as for many of us some un so many unanswered questions to why we broke up in the first place. We should not have to always dwell on it as sometimes yes breakups for many of us will take time to get over that particular someone. It's a rough transition from sharing every part of your life with that particular someone that you loved and cared about to picking up the phone and suddenly remembering that it's a bad idea to call them. In some cases people can slip into depression, a mood disorder that can feel so heavy and difficult that no one else can possibly understand what you are going through. Caring for yourself and deciding how to move forward can be a serious challenge for many of us. Now with this video comprehension guide today I will be giving you guys four methods on how how to deal with depression after a breakup. They are as follows. Method one, handling depression. Method two, handling your feelings. Method three, caring for yourself. And method four, avoiding isolation. But before I begin or continue this video or top it, I want to introduce myself to the new viewers that are watching today. My name is Asby Answers from Life of an Asb, or as I'm known for Asb for short, I am advocating that educate for others about mental health and autism. All I'm all about inclusion, not exclusion. I'm all about creating awareness and acceptance of others as well as also doing some fun and game. If you're wanting to be a part of my YouTube family today as you're watching this, feel free to smash that subscribe button on the bottom right hand corner and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos I post. As I said, usually my schedule is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but that may subject to change. So feel free to keep an eye out for me via my social medias that are listed below for when I post as well as also just giving you guys updates via through those social medias. So as I said before basically breakups can be really hard for many of us, it can be devastating. Sometimes for many of us we tend to question over and over again as I said why is this happening, I have done better, was I the problem etc etc. Right? But in saying this though we need to know that we're not at fault. Sometimes breakups just happen in our everyday life regardless how old we are or even how young we are if we're trialing out the dating life. So here is the methods now I'm going to share with you all. So the very first one of method one as I mentioned is handling your depression. Now the difference between sadness and depression. As I said sadness and depression are two different emotions with different symptoms. It's okay to not be okay once in a while. We will all go through a breakup sometime in our lives as I said. After breakup sometimes it's normal for us to cry and grieve, lose some sleep, get angry and simply lose interest in regular everyday activities that really really enjoy but remember some parts of this is a healing process for us but you might have more, a more serious problem if you're experiencing things like as the following your serious changes in your eating and sleeping habits fatigue you're often feeling worthless empty or hopeless unbearable relentless emotional pain irritability difficult focusing on making or making the right decisions Failure to clean your living space and manage basic hygiene. Thinking about death or even hurting yourself. Number two is logging in your symptoms or journaling your systems. As I said before, basically, that it's a good idea to write down our feelings, emotions, symptoms, so that we can keep ourselves back on track. So basically, I've said about this in one of the videos that I shared earlier in the piece about handling your loneliness, which I'll link in the archive above me and in the description for you to follow. When we do see something out of the ordinary of our everyday lives, we should be able to seek help no matter who it's from, be it from our medical expert team, be it through our friends or family or whoever. It's okay to ask for help as this is the first step for our recovery process, for any recovery process, be it a breakup, be it addiction, whatever it may be. And this is the first step also in recognizing that something is wrong with us or just something I'm wrong in general. If you suspect that you may have depression, however, or that something else might be wrong, then try, as I said, keeping a journal to note down what is it that you're going through. If in doubt, write it on paper, on your computer, wherever it may be for you to keep track of what you're doing. It can be helpful to review it later. You can bring it to the doctors if you decide to get an evaluation as well as just some help. Try, my advice here is try writing down some basic feelings like I felt hopeless all morning or I tried to have fun but I was mostly listless and tired. Another one you could say, you don't have to be very tired if it's too upsetting though, just to be in mind too. Also, you could try and write down what you did in that time period, like I watched movies all the evening and I cried a lot, or I stayed in bed for three hours in the morning because I had no energy left in me. Number three, know the time frame and urgency level that typically will constitute a problem. Experts usually recommend waiting around two weeks to a month to see if 
things get better for us. You also have a pro you also have a problem if your sadness is preventing you from doing basic living tasks that you take for granted, like working or caring for your kids. You should see a doctor if you haven't improved at all within that two weeks period two three per weeks period you come we could take care of yourself or even your family number three you think that you might hurt yourself number four talk to a doctor about treatment option your doctor may recommend therapy and or medication to create chemical imbalances in the brain the brain can get sick just like any other body parts can there's nothing wrong with you just to remind yourself if you have the pressure on if you take medication to help fix it or not fix it as us just to keep it in the balance realm basically don't be afraid to take it do try and trust the medical team either via through your counselor and or doctors etc as they're there to help so there's again no shame to ask for help number five contact a crisis line if you're in immediate danger if you think that you might be in danger or about to harm yourself don't just sit there grab your phone and find a line to text or call them there are, like i said before there's going to be some like lists of organizations around the world that you can call or text that will be in the description below as well as right now if you want to pause the video so you can find it if you're in dire need with one feel free to do so if you'd be more comfortable with each other one contact connect with a trained crisis counselor by texting the crisis text line wherever you may be method two is handling your feelings number one of the step is recognize that processing your feelings will take time especially if the relationship has been long term for you this will be a difficult and probably a long process for you expect that and give yourself as much time as you need to get over the breakup some people believe that the recovery from a breakup takes about half the time that the relationship lasted for example if your relationship lasted six months then the you may need only three months to fully recover. Keep in mind that everyone is different in this process, so you may need a little longer or shorter than this. It's because this is just a given guideline. Number two, give yourself space and time to feel your difficult feelings. It's normal to feel, for people to feel anger, frustration, sadness, fear, and all kinds of feelings and emotions after a bad breakup. Some of them may not be related to your ex at all. That's okay, let yourself cry and be upset. It's okay to mourn the last relationship. Try labeling your feelings if they're overwhelming you. Are you feeling insecure? What about the future? Are you lost? Etc. Etc. Number three, put away any reminders of your old relationship. Take everything that reminds you of your ex, such as your pictures, letters, keepsakes, etc. etc. and put it all in a box. Then put the box out of sight and out of mind, like say in a closet or under your bed. Leave it there for now. You can sort it all out later. After you've gotten over the breakup, don't forget to throw it all away. You might regret it later. If you think you might be tempted to revisit the box too soon, try putting a notice on it like do not open until a certain month, like say April or whatever. Number four, find a good outlet. Coping with strong emotions can be hard it helps to find a good way to let them out experiment with different ways to express yourself as long as they're healthy and safe here are some ideas i suggest to you all exercise expressing yourself using the arts painting making music drawing writing etc cry imagine yourself dramatically telling your story on a talk show writing in your journal rip or cut a paper from the recycling bin scream into a pillow and hit the bed Smash ice cubes in the bathtub. Do whatever you can and what you want to get out of your system after the breakup of your emotions. But yet again, I say this, do it safely. Number five, engage in your hobbies and try exploring new ones too. It helps to find new ways to be productive and creative, basically. And also in saying this though, like it's okay to just do similar hobbies that you've done in the past as well as maybe, as I said, exploring new ones because obviously with the new ones if we haven't done them of what we wanted to do when we were younger but you couldn't try doing it now it's never too late number six ask yourself what you may need right now if you notice having yourself having a rough time ask yourself what could help me to make me feel better at this given moment think about what you could do right now that would make this difficult situation a little easier for you perhaps things could be improved by a bit like something like one calling a friend taking a warm shower, playing with your pet if you've got one, drinking hot chocolate, getting a hug from someone else, doing something else that feels right at that moment. Number seven, work towards moving on. Remember you can't dwell what happened in the past of your ex and that you need to be determined to move on and focus on you and yourself because it's always important to put us first in the biggest picture. 
possible because obviously at this point of, point of time after a break of obviously it's healthy for us just to sit down reevaluate things and actually focus on ourselves on our mental health spiritual health and whatever else it may be it's important in this process to decide so that you're ready to conquer anything that may arise now and in the future also eventually you'll need to accept that the relationship has ended and be able to plan for a future that doesn't include your ex this is your goal keep it in the back of your mind you don't have to be there yet and it may take a while it's helpful to remember which way you want to be heading number eight remember that rec recovery is a linear setbacks does happen however but that doesn't make them permanent you may get better a while and then suddenly feel a little worse that doesn't mean that you won't recover you may bounce back from the setback in a day week or two or even more depending on how you know strung out you are method three caring for yourself number one to keep a regular schedule as best as you can it's going to be hard at first as we know after a breakup when we go through this but we may have to force ourselves to eat regular meals and sleep regularly this too will take time so be patient with yourself never be hard on yourself you may need to function at a suboptimal level for some time but this is okay also number two find sneaky ways to be a little healthier when you have depression it can be hard to put effort into your own health something is better than nothing find little ways you can look after yourself and then be proud of yourself if food prep is hard try eating a healthy no prep snack like an apple or string cheese or something that you can grab even keep our non-perishable snack like a jar of nuts at your desk if you're working in a desk do many little exercises like little leg lifts while watching tv or lifting a five pound white while lying in bed number three work on basic hygiene depression can make order to us like brushing our teeth brushing our hair showering etc momentally difficult they are however very important to our health neglecting them for too long can make you sick or cause health problems later on try to brush your teeth at least once a day even a cursory brush without a toothbrush paste i should say it's better than nothing you can also scrape your teeth with a washcloth to help remove any build up try to show at least once a day or every other day use baby wipes in areas that tend to get sweaty like your armpits or in the zone under your bra apply deodorant if you're too tired to get dressed at least change your pajamas and your underwear every day you can also put on an odd t-shirt and sweatpants if you're feeling well enough to do so. Number four, stay away from unhealthy coping mechanisms. Sometimes when people are suffering from depression, they are tempted to use, abuse alcohol, use cigarettes or whatever it may be, drugs, binge eat and the later. This can harm your body and make you feel even worse. So look for other healthier op options if you can to do so. Also in saying this, basically, for the coping mechanisms, make sure you're not in the wrong company as well number five don't be afraid to ask for help to help you with self-care and other basic tasks that's needed depression can make it hard to initiate tasks and stay focused on them sometimes having another person there with you can help a lot you can ask for help with some hygiene and cleaning tasks that you're struggling to manage here's some examples of things you could say I'm exhausted and having a hard time cleaning my house. Would you please come over and help me? I've got root beer and vanilla ice cream so I could pay you with a root beer and float afterwards. I know that I've been a mess lately and that I've been forgetting to shower. I'm sure you don't want a smelly roommate. Would you give me a push off? I'm turning stinky. This breakup really has me devastated and I'm struggling to stay on top of my chores. Would you be willing to be my laundry buddy and do some laundry with me? Dad, I've been too tired to cook for myself lately. Is there any chance... I could come over for a healthy dinner time sometime or even if it's your mum. Last but not least is method for avoiding isolation. Your loved ones is number one. Spend lots of time with your friends and family during this time of your breakup. They will be your support system as you deal with the aftermath of the breakup. Did you see some of those people much during the relationship? If the relationship was so intense and long term, chances are you haven't seen some of your friends or family for months. Take time to spend quality time with them and do something fun tell your loved ones what you're going through it's okay to say i had a rough breakup and i could possibly really use a friend right now number two make socializing part of your everyday schedule it's easy to fall into the trap of self-isolation during a depressive episode it's crucial that you keep reaching out to people so that you don't start spending days or weeks on your own Try to spend at least half an hour of every day on quality time with your loved ones. But as I said before, sometimes it's okay to be lonely for a time period for some of us, depending on this given situation. Number three, say your feelings out loud. Being honest about your feelings helps people know how to respond to you. Don't rely on subtext or hints to let people know how you feel. Say what emotion you're feeling and go from there. Examples, I'm feeling today tired today. 
right now I just want something to do easy like watching a movie together I'm exhausted could we talk in the morning I'm feeling better today I think it would be fun to go out are you in the mood for that feel kind of nervous and shaky I don't have the energy to go out just staying in and hanging out sound okay to you before tell people how they can help you especially if they're confused about what you're feeling most people want to help you but they may not necessarily know how and sometimes there's a right way and wrong way to helping others regardless of what it may be as I said before of the how to's basically on how to handle people with depression and the like which I'll link in the playlist above me and below me so you can find it of what to do and what not to say to people that are depressed etc etc but here are some examples you could basically say I could really use a distraction today and want to do something fun. But I just need someone to listen and be there for me right now. I'm not ready to meet cute guys yet. I'm still not over him or I'm not over cute girls yet. I'm not over her. And I need some time to process. I'll let you know when I want to, you to point out some hot... I need a hug right now. I'm tempted to text him or her. Can you hang out with me and help me not to do this? I'm feeling lonely and I could use some company... Anything from taking a walk or talking to watching TV together would be nice, really nice. Number five, find some trusted people to confide in. Trust is really important when we do seek help, either through our friends, family, or someone that is willing to help us. Trust can be broken in an instant. Trust is an important foundation in building up a relationship or friendship, however, as we know. We need to know that we're not alone when we do face our struggles of our everyday situations. Facing difficult emotions is hard, and it's even harder when you do it alone. Look for a good listener and ask them if it's a good time to talk about things. Letting it all out can help a lot for us. So this quickly ends the video about coping with depression after a breakup. Smash the like if you like this. Comment below basically how you cope after a breakup and if you suffer from depression so that we can actually get the ball rolling for a discussion under there. Feel free to also share my videos around because as you never know, it may help one person at a time. And all for the day, guys. Thanks for support. Thanks for watching. Do what you love. Love what you're doing. Until next time, it's be signing out and I'll see you again soon. Ciao for now.